Hello traders and welcome to this afternoon webinar. My name is Theo for those who see me for first time and I would like to welcome you on board. So today we will talk about uh, market analysis and we're going to continue with the part two series. Good afternoon from Belgium. Mark Roger, it's a pleasure to have you on this webinar and everyone else, of course. So just to know each other a bit more, can you please let me know where are you watching us? Ladies and gentlemen, please use the chat box below and just let me know uh, from which part of the world you're participating. That will be great to, to know. So in the meantime, let's uh, start with our webinar. First and foremost, the disclaimer, definitely. We would like to make it uh, understandable to everyone that this content is for general information only, and it's not intended to provide trading or investment advice or any personal recommendations. You can take a few seconds to read furthermore if you would like to. Next, uh, about our broker, about Admirals, we are a Forex and CFD broker. We offer more than 8,000 financial instruments in your disposal. We are a global, um, global license. We have license in many countries, in Cyprus, in England, the UK, in Estonia, in Australia, in Canada, in South Africa, and many more are joining and we are expanding. We try to keep our spreads as minimal as possible, especially when it comes to intraday trading, guys. It's important to have very small spread because uh, we are speculating on the price movement. Let's say during the London session, if we are trading the DAX 40 and we have a spread average of one point, what does it mean? It means 20 pips on a move either to the upside or to the downside, it's uh, it's achievable because of the high volatility and liquidity around that time. So the spread can be uh, very, very small. And you can access for now our trading and investing programs through the platform of MetaTrader, MT4 and MT5. Also, don't forget our mobile application. That's a great, great tool for you to use. And I will encourage every single one to go right now on Google Play, on Apple Store, and just download it on your devices. And as for myself, okay, who is that guy in front of us that is trying to explain us <laughs> all this stuff? For those who see me for first time, my name is Theo. I'm originally from Cyprus. I have more than 10 years experience as a trader and investor. I hold a master in physics. That's my education background. When it comes to investing, I'm a long-term investor. So I kind of likely more the tech stocks and the automotive stocks. And that's what I buy and hold. When it comes to trading, to speculating, uh, I'm a swing trader. But if I find the time during the day, I love the intraday trading. I have a specific way of trading uh, specific markets for the intraday purpose. And it's something from uh, next month. Hopefully, I will have some time to dedicate during the live trading webinar. I do Monday to Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 8 a.m. GMT time, London time. And for those who who are not participating yet because you don't know it, you are more than welcome. Uh, you can register from the website the same way you register for this webinar. You can register for the live trading webinars. And here at Admiral, I'm investing and trading educator and analyst. And soon I'm going to record the, uh, the course I wrote for you guys 
about trading, about investing, and we're going to replace the Zero to Hero, of course, from the website. And I believe it's going to bring a lot, a lot of value to you guys there so you can learn exactly what to do, how to do it, and you can uh, refer back to these videos over and over and over again until you feel confident and to uh, develop yourself as a trader, the trader you would like to, to be. Now, for today's agenda, I find it very, very uh, interesting the fact that many traders, regardless we explain constantly about how to trade, how to read the markets, how to read the trends, and uh, even though there are some very common mistakes that traders and investors do, especially traders, when it comes to CFD products, when it comes to uh, speculating on the price move, and we want to pay attention, we have to pay close attention to the market behavior, to the market character, to the market trend, to the market development in order to execute this trade. It's... Uh, Unfortunately, many people, they approach trading and investing the same way. They, are, they have similar behavior, but when it comes to leveraging uh, our accounts in order to trade, to speculate on the price movement, unfortunately, that's where traders, they get caught in, uh, in an environment that it doesn't have any trading uh, any trending characteristic and it just moving sideways or it just move in a way that we don't have a recognized pattern. And that's very important. People, they get confused when we talk about trends or triangles or rectangles or head and shoulder pattern, double tops and double bottoms. And they do expect, ladies and gentlemen, that all the time in the market, we have to see something among this price behavior. But there are many times that the market moves in a way that we don't have a recognized pattern. And what do we do in that way? Even though we plan our trade to take advantage of, of a market that it started as a trending market, at some point, it shows a behavior that we can't uh, explain it. So what do we do? We just step aside, right? It doesn't mean that all the time always when we are looking for something to trade if it's not there we have to force it to be there and i will give you some examples and today the uh the main the main goal of this webinar is to go through some common mistakes some very very important mistakes traders do and we would like from now on to eliminate this. Okay. By the way, because later I will go through the charts, the MetaTrader 5, I will, uh, I will ask from all of you guys here, please type some pairs you try to analyze and you are confused, all right? Because that's how we're gonna learn from our mistakes. All right, because today I would pay too much attention to the trends. I would like to, to read some pairs maybe uh, today in the live trading. Someone asked me about the euro against the New Zealand, EURNZD, that pair and uh, which direction. Yesterday, uh, they asked me about the pound Australian dollar in which direction do you think it's going to move and all this stuff. And there is a reason I mentioned these two pairs because they are moving sideways. But in some time frames, we can see them that they have a different behavior. So we have to understand every time we're going to, uh, we want to analyze the market and we want to trade, we have to understand 
which is the time frame we are doing our analysis and which is the time frame we're going to do the execution. And it doesn't mean if we don't see anything there that feels <coughs> and fulfills our trading strategy that we have to change and flip between time frames just to force a strategy to appear. If it's not there, it's not there. We just move on. Okay. Guys, please make sure you ask any questions you have. Use the chat box below. And uh, I will just put a test there to make sure that everyone can read it and everyone can reply back. And ask any questions. You have 50 minutes in this webinar. This is your webinar. I don't want you to feel that here it's a, a classroom or a lecture. It's not regardless that I'm the only one who speaks. <laughs> okay, so please make sure you use the time to ask questions, you dedicate your time, and I appreciate that you are here. And of course, for those who are going to watch us later on, on the YouTube when we're going to upload it, but especially for you guys who are live here, please take, the, take advantage of this time and put your questions there so I can read them. I can read them anonymously if you want. And um, and I can help you with your trading. That's why I'm here. So let's move on. Here I put trader's mistake. I would like to ask someone who is brave enough and wants to write on the text box below. What do you see here? What can you see in this picture? You obviously see a market that moves in a in a direction. Now, in which direction do you see the picture A to move? Is it going upwards? Is it going downwards? Is it just moving sideways? What do you guys think? One answer came so far. Two answers came. Three people. Okay. What about the rest? Does anyone else want to comment if that's okay with you guys? All right. So everyone answered correct. And that's an uptrend. This is a market that moves gradually to the upside. So as we learn so far, and I hope we apply this, when we see the market moving to the upside from A to B, we wait to see some decline in the price. So it can give us an advantage point to buy. And at point C, for example, if we find some price action or we have some Fibonacci retracement, let's say 50% Fib retracement, or this just matches with the previous support, uh, previous broken resistance now can act as support. There are a few ways as we share many times in our strategies for trending markets and we can anticipate some reaction here. We can buy it uh, with the anticipation of the price to move higher. And if we are, if the prediction is correct, then we make some money. If not, we have our stop loss and we just move on to the next trade. Now, Every trader that C from A to B, then B to C, then C to D, at this point here, what is everyone anticipating at point D when we see some reversal candles here? What do we anticipate? What do we anticipate? We do anticipate the price to decline. And with some tools, as we mention all the time, let's say from here to there, we draw a fib and we find a retracement. Or if this level here matches somehow with this area there, or some strong price action rejected the lowest price, we can use few indicators, few uh, tools to to show us when this the 2 trend runs out of steam so we can buy 
in the anticipation of the price to push higher. Okay, and that's look like very crystal clear. It's a recognized pattern. It's nothing wrong with that. It's everything. Everything looks uh, looks smooth, and we like when we get into these trades that we see a trend, an uptrend, retracement. We buy, and the price is just continue climb higher and higher. Now, let's have a look at the picture B. What do you guys see here? Do you see an uptrend? Do you see a downtrend? Do you see a consolidation? What do you see here? Okay, someone sees a, an uptrend. I don't know, ranging. Yeah, consolidation. Yeah, so the thing is that there is no right and wrong answer here. Why I say that? Because for, a, and, and guys, write this down. In picture B, for a trader, let's assume, assuming that this is um, a daily chart. I hope we are all familiar with daily charts. It's a daily chart. Now, for a swing trader, for a four-hour trader, or for a weekly trader, for a long-term trader, for a daily trader, even for one-hour trader, this is an uptrend because the major trend is up. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. If the major trend is up, what do I want to do? I want to buy. Now, for a 15-minute trader, for a 5-minute trader, this is a ranging market. This is a non-trending environment. So, it's coming down to a point that the same traders they see from A to D, these two pictures, if let's say we have 100 traders and we ask them, what do you see here? Let me just cover this. Oop. So what do you see here? 100 traders. A, B, C, D, E. A, B, C, D, E. All of them, they see the same thing, right? All of us, we see the same thing. You see the same thing in both pictures. And at point E, guys, please pay attention to that. It's something so, so important for, for your trading. And, and unfortunately, that's where many traders, they, they get confused. So at point E, we all anticipate a reversal price action here and we want to buy, right? And our profit target, the first at the least profit target, it's the D. I buy low, I sell high, and I make this profit at the least partial closing if, or if not uh, full size closing. Then, we buy in this occasion, let's say that's the euro against the US dollar. And let's say this is January. Let's say this is the euro against the US dollar, but this happened in June. There is a reason that I put you in front of the same currency pair with the same pattern. In January, we see this. Give me one second. In January, ladies and gentlemen, we see this uptrend A, B, B to C, C to D. And we said, okay, right here, that's my sweet spot. I'm waiting price to come 
at this area of support and I would like to buy here. When we buy in January, we experience this outcome. The price, it's just climb higher and higher and higher. And in few days, let's say if it's a daily chart or four hour chart, we have the profit target. Then, is it, guys, do you understand this? That's simple trend trading, right? But where is the mistake? The mistake is that we think as traders, that the market is always move in a straight one direction without any weird consolidations or without any weird uh, patterns, let's say. Even especially patterns we don't know, we've never seen in front of us. Then in June, we see again the same currency pair, the Euro USD. And we see an uptrend development here, A, B, B to C, C to D, and we have our higher high, we have our higher low. We expect the price to correct a bit, 50%, 61.8%, or to correct and come to where previously uh, broken this resistance and we would like to buy here. And guess what? That's what we do, right? We buy here. And the price, it starts doing this way, this thing. Now, and it comes down to the eye. <clears throat> For traders, they have a stop loss here, Let's say that was a, a hammer, a bullish hammer, or bullish engulfing. Let's say it was a bullish hammer anyway. And uh, we have our entry here, our stop there. And the price comes and take our stop loss. That's okay. This uptrend, uptrending market didn't develop as it developed in January. That's okay. We accept it. It's part of trading. It doesn't mean it's going to develop, and that's why we have our stop loss. Where is the problem now? The problem is for traders, they are not calm to see the markets the way it is, and they always want to see the markets the way they feel. I will repeat that. The mistake comes when the traders see the market from the way the trader wants the market to be, not from the way the market currently is. And why this is a problem among the traders? Because many traders at this point here, at the point I, they will anticipate this as a double bottom. Okay, Theo, what do you see at point E and at point I? Don't you see a double bottom? Isn't this, Theo, a double bottom? It is a double bottom, yes, because we have equal bottoms. But where is this double bottom appear in terms of this picture, of the big picture? Does it appear at an area of strong support that indicates that many buyers, they are there to buy it with the anticipation to push it higher? Or it appear during an uptrend because buyers weren't that strong to maintain a buying momentum and the sellers, they took control and they pushed the price all the way back to the origin point. Traders, uh, do you understand this? Can you, can you realize what's happening with this market behavior? It's a very common 
trust me, that's a really, really common market behavior. That's the beginning of the head and shoulder reversal development. If you can see here, B, D, H, it's kind of head and shoulder development. If you have this continuation to the downside, but the problem I see with many traders is they see at point I a double bottom and they focus that this a double bottom, it's the beginning of a push to the upside. But if we become more objective and we take a step back, observe the chart from the market perspective, like the market shows what is really happening and not what we think it should happen and not to stay at point E after this move and forget this consolidation as a, as a friend uh, Oki mentioned, that is a consolidation. So, we're going we're gonna to experience trading with a frustrating way. And at some point, excuse me, <coughs> at some point, maybe we're going to start losing our faith to the trends because we, we see only this part and we don't see this part here. Now, I said at the beginning, Guys, do you understand this? Do you want me to explain it a bit more? Please let me know. I said that at the, at the beginning that for a day trader, a four-hour chart trader, this must be read as an uptrend. But for a five-minute trader, for a 15-minute trader that I believe many of you are, this, yes, it's a consolidation. And if there is no clear direction, on the higher time frame, the only thing uh, it's a high probability to happen during a daily consolidation. If we go down to the lower time frames and trade, we, we're gonna just experience frustration because the market does not have a character, does not have a recognized pattern. We don't know where the forces are. We don't know who is pushing priors, prices and in which direction. So why am I want to get involved in a market that it's trendless? It means, is it the buyer who controls the market now? Is it the seller who controls the market? If I, uh, if I sell here, then uh, maybe this is going to break to the downside. Or if I buy here, maybe this is a double bottom. You see, it's not clear. For the trader who bought here, okay, this trader have no idea how this is going to be developed. Same like this one here. We don't know how this is going to develop. In the one case, this developed as a nice continuation trending market. In the other case, this developed as a sideways market. What should we do? Should we add here at the point G a new position? Of course not. And because if we add here a new position, then where our stop will be? Our stop has to go well below this point D, right? In the same area where our stop went when we bought from here. But if we buy in this impulse move, in this momentum, and we buy to hold it with the anticipation the price will kind of come here, then maybe our entry from the stop loss area, it will be that big that it won't allow us to make even one-to-one -one by the time the price is going to reach the point D. Guys, do you understand this? I try to explain them as simple as possible, but this is one of the most common mistakes traders do when they read the trend. And I repeat, you read the trend, you read the whole picture. Like here, you read the whole picture. Now, if you are 
it's clear that if you are an intraday trader and you recognize that the last few weeks, the market, it's just, it was moving upwards. Let's say, sorry, the last few months, the market was moving upward and then it just came here and consolidate. Better we wait for some clarification. But if you are a swing trader and you see this behavior, even if you participate here or not, what you see now, it's price at point I. And at point I, price is not behaving consistently with this uptrend. So the character of the market, it's not an uptrend trending market. What do we do? We just wait for the traders who are moving prices, the big funds, the hedge funds, the banks, to decide which direction they want to go. And we will definitely see the price moving into the direction. And then we can identify a part then among the direction that we can trade. And that's where we trade. So when we see that, we step aside. <coughs> we don't need to force the market. Excuse me. We don't need and we don't want to force the market just for uh, to squeeze a trade because we don't recognize this pattern here. So we have to be patient and wait on the sidelines for a market that it's easy and understandable to us. Let's move on. Let's see the same thing in a downtrend. I assume for now you, uh, you understand the concept, right? So from A to B, uh, if I hide this, So we have a market that moves downward. Yeah, we see a downtrend. Do you guys agree that this is a downtrend? Is anyone uh, wants to say something different? Does anyone see this as an uptrend maybe or as a consolidation? Or do we all agree that this is a downtrend, guys? Yes, yes, okay. So, op. so in this downtrend, yes, yes, all right. Okay, so everyone agrees that this market is just moving downward. Ideally, what do we want to confirm in a downtrend? We want to confirm a lower low, B and D, and a lower high, A and C. We confirm that, so we want to sell. But where are we going to sell? Ideally, we want to wait, and that's our strategy, and I, we want to wait for a correction and be patient around a previous area of, resist, of support, broken support. We lack as a resistance now. And we're going to be patient waiting here, either with um, price, with uh, limit orders, sell limit orders, or we're going to wait for a price action to develop. And <clears throat> we can take advantage of the sell-off if this is going to happen. Now, let's assume that this is the pound uh, JBP. JPY, and let's say that this is a uh, one hour chart, and this is again a pound, JBP, JPY, again one hour chart, okay? So in this, in this occasion, up, okay, up to here. 
In this occasion, ladies and gentlemen, when we identify the area we want to sell and we see our strategy matches with uh, with with the activity we want to do here, we just execute, right? The same with this one here, I should have covered from this point, okay? So in both occasions, we want to sell and we are very clear that we want to sell here. Yeah. Now, the outcome, unfortunately, it's not something we can control as traders. And I hope that everyone agrees with that. We cannot control what the price is going to do. That's why we said in this probability business, we enter, if we enter here and we have our stop there, we must make at least two to one reward to risk and not one to one reward to risk. Because with two to one reward to risk, we have high chances, even if we get only 40% uh, of the time winning trades to have a steadily growth account. But if we only go for one to one, it means we have to win at least 60% and to, to, to make our account uh, growth. So from a risk management perspective, Always we aim for minimum two to one. I go in most of the times for three to one, but of course there are uh, times we go for two to one. So at this point here, at point E, we sell and we expect the price to push to the downside. Now, let's go to the next example. Again, until this happens. Uh, let's cover it one more time. We are at point D. Yep. At point E, we want to sell again as before. So we sell at point E, but the price at point, when it's going to reach us the point D, it behaves this time different than previous same currency pair same time frame same pattern same trend direction different uh, days or different months and we start see the price it's moving in this consolidation now and there are traders let's assume that some traders they sold there but some traders didn't. And I would like, guys, I would like you to focus at point G because recently that's what we had in the Japanese yen currency pairs. And we had this pattern behavior from A to B was clear, B to C, C to D. The market made this move. It didn't create the F didn't create a new low like it did it here. And we had a retracement here and it was a very nice lucrative price action uh, setup that most of the times we trade this setup. But this at this point here, why, why we don't sell the the market why can you guys uh i will leave you for 30 seconds to type what do you think why at point g we don't want to 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 press the sell button regardless of the price action this can happen in the five minute chart in the one hour chart in the one minute chart in the one week chart but the concept it's exactly the same. Why I don't want to sell this market at point uh, G. If you don't know, I'm not testing your knowledge, of course not. I'm just asking a question 
And if some people know, I would like, or is it just what you think? It's not right or wrong here. I have few answers came. All of them, of course, are correct. As we said, no right or wrong here because every trader sees from a different point of view. Few more seconds. Uh, anyone else want to write something, please? I have different answers here, and that's the uh, and that's the beauty of of trading because some people they say why not to sell. Some other people they say we wait for a break, and that's very correct as well. Uh, I don't know. Okay, wait, not sell now. Okay. So why we don't want to sell here, ideally, it's simply because the market broke the structure. The market lost its downtrend. Is it still pushing down? And that's where the trader's mindset and investor's mindset is coming in to a conflict here. Let's say we are an investors, okay? We don't trade with leverage, we buy and hold. Let's say we, okay, I should mention that on the previous example, but anyway, let's say we're not gonna use leverage and we want to just sell it for a long term. I'm not planning to, um, to change that my bias for a couple of months and let something that significant happen in the world. So I decide that I want to sell. I don't mind if the price it's gonna just move like this and then it's gonna keep going down. Why? Simply because I don't use leverage and I don't uh, trade CFDs. Now let's go to the traders perspective that's where it's the conflict when we are trading ladies and gentlemen when we speculate on the price move always we have to use our stop loss and always we need to make sure we are trading with a strong bias in a very strong momentum market. Why? Because there is high chance that the market is going to continue in a predominant direction without needed to take our stop loss. So to move to the opposite. But if the market doesn't have a clear structure, it can, as nobody, it's like imagine a boat without a captain. And let's say it's, uh, it's heading to the north. If there is no one behind the wheel to hold it steady, then as it goes to the north, the waves can shake the boat and can change the direction a little bit to the, to the west, then let's say west-north, then they can turn it to the east, east-north, then it can go to the west again until someone decides to go there and grab the wheel and hold it for some period of time and uh, and force the boat into a direction, okay? That direction, it's going to be a direction we can recognize, of course, because we're going to see it for some time moving in, uh, in one way. Same with the market. The trendless market from now on, you have to think them as a boat without a captain. I don't want to compare this with a, with an airplane without a captain. Okay, <laughs> it's a bit dangerous. <laughs> Let's just, not either with a car, okay? Just with a boat, all right? <laughs> so, of course I'm joking, yeah. Uh, so when we see this market here, at this point, at point F, we realize that the sellers, these sellers here, these sellers here who caused this market to push to the downside, they are not as strong now. They don't have that momentum or that willingness to create a new low, to 
go lower than the D. And the buyers maybe took control of this market and it pushes to the upside. So what, how do we explain it to ourselves in a way to stay away from uh, trading to the downside? We just have to understand that this market, it's not trending anymore and it's in a trendless environment. So our belief that at point B, a retest of the point B, that it came with the point E, that the market can continue trading lower and lower is not what the market is doing. So our belief is not the market's action it doesn't match with the market action and we have to accept it and not trying to force trade here and ladies and gentlemen anyhow the market at some point it will either continue to the downside or it's going to push to the upside and create a new trend now there is if we if we say okay i'm going to sell here and the trade appears to be um a winning trade every time we're going to come across with this market behave behavior we will believe that we know for sure that this market is still trending and we're going to sell it if we see a predominant downtrend now the force is to the downside of course the force is to the downside but at this point here the market broke its structure so why to force a trade here it's not that clear we have to we can wait for a break and then we can start looking for shorts again other traders they can see this as a double bottom, the D and the H. And if we if they see a price action here that supports reversal, they're gonna be all in to buy. They can throw some indicators and they're gonna buy. Is it something wrong with that? Absolutely not. Maybe this reversal here, it's gonna be the beginning of a new uptrend that it's gonna go to, I don't know, to the Mars, to the moon, somewhere else. Okay, maybe. Maybe it's going to give you 500 pips, whatever. But from a statistical point of view and from a trading perspective, the highest probabilities in trading comes when we're trading with a trend and not when we're trading against the trend. So you see that in this area, let's go back to the area. In this area here, and that's the same area with this, all traders, they agree that we see a downtrend and we want to sell. But at this point here, guys, at point G, you have we have to abandon our belief that this market is in a strong downtrend because maybe something else will happen. Maybe something changes. So should we trade it to the downside? If we're going to decide to trade it from this point here, we have to take in consideration that this is a low probability uh, trading activity and we can reduce our trading size. If we, are, if we risk here at point E, we risk 1% and that's our full trading size to risk, then... At point G, if we want to trade, we have to go, let's say, to half percent or 0.4%, 0.25%, whatever it's 0.8%, something less than, uh, than the full size. You have to treat the full size you risk on a trade as a number that when you're going to put this number on your, on your lot size, is the ultimate high probability trade. 
if it's not a high probability trade, and again, what is a high probability trade? It's when we see a clear trend. And we execute with a high probability uh, uh, trading this, this plan, all right? But in any other occasion, we have to reduce our trading size because the probabilities are lower regardless if the trade will win or uh, we lose, regardless that. We have to treat it with, uh, with realization that high probability can win, low probability can also win. Okay, and I would like to show you as well one example from the chart we had recently, okay, on one of the Japanese yen currency pairs. But before that, I would like to make sure that everyone is familiar with, uh, with our channels here at Admirals. First, uh, just give me one minute to walk you through where you can find the trading podcast and our channels for your information. Uh, let's find the window. Yes, I think it's this one here. Oh. So uh, if you go to the website, admiralmarkets.com, and you go here at Analytics, weekly trading podcast, and most of the people, they, can, they scroll down and download it on their devices. A few people, as you can see here, they just played from the website directly. This week we had the CPI in we will have the CPI in Australia, New Zealand, interest rates in Canada. And it's a great way, guys, to engage with the podcast because it gives you also the fundamental side of the trading. And I do some uh, analysis on this and find maybe some tradable opportunities on uh, some pairs. Okay, right. This uh, for this week, I think it's the Aussie US dollar and the Canadian dollar US dollar. So I will send you the link on the chat. So please make sure you start engaging yourself with that. On every every single Monday, I record and upload them. We also have the Admirals Instagram page. Please uh, make sure you follow us because uh, every day we put reels, we put stories, very, very um informative content and it's something you really don't want to miss out of that and of course the youtube channel please make sure you like you subscribe on the youtube channel uh, every day i do the live trading you can subscribe from here or directly from the website doesn't matter and here at the trading spotlight, we put all the webinars like the one I do now. Paul is doing webinar and yes, exceptional traders as well. So uh, you can let a lot of things. This is absolutely free for everyone here. So uh, please refer to the, the recordings and you're going to only find a great benefit. And also... The last one I would like to mention is the Telegram channel, guys. Now you can um, you can comment on the Telegram, and every time you want to ask anything about trading or something we mention on the live trading webinars, please feel free to ask there. Let's move on. This is a recent example from the Australian dollar against the Japanese yen. And it shows exactly what we mentioned about the market character. Now, this, uh, this rejection here with this long tail it came, by the way, that was last Wednesday, I think, or last Thursday, all right? So that was a perfect, perfect uh, misleading example. Why? First, as a price action, if we isolate this price action, it's the one of the most lucrative trades to take 
to the downside because the price was moving down. It retested the previous highs, the previous resistance. It rejected the 50 moving average, the 200 moving average, the trend line resistance, and the horizontal resistance. And it just sold off so nicely all the way down. So that was one of the best, best price action. And it is one of the best price action to trade. However, when do we trade this? Do we just trade it in an isolation? No, we need to see the market structure. We need to zoom out a little bit and see what the market is doing. And then we zoom in and go to the price action. Here, if we observe the market make the very nice lower low, we were watching closely this area here, as we said on the live trading, and some nice opportunities, they came around this area on the lower time frames and we could sell it, but after a few candlestick, seller's candlestick, we start putting these bullish candles, and it means the sellers are not there. So we see this pin bar here, let's call it, or long up the tail, dodgy fall setup. There are many different names to call it, the implications are the same. Implications are not here. Implications are there. What we have to understand is not this one. It's this one. Is that the market stop moving with the momentum to the downside. It stop creating lower lows. If it stop creating lower lows, any price action in this area, in this consolidation, ranging, sideways market move is a very low probability trade. So we didn't want to trade this. And I hope many traders, they didn't take this. But unfortunately, the majority of the traders, they got caught in this candle pattern and they were pressing sell, sell all the way down and selling and selling and selling. Okay. So... This is a great example, guys. Please refer to that again and again uh, because I'm sure there are it, it's a it, it's different when we see something and we think that okay, this price action it's gonna move the market the way we want to see the market, but it's different when we understand that the price action is the second thing we're gonna see on the chart. First, we're going to see where the where the volume moves, where the market moves. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, it was a privilege and honor to host this webinar for you today. Please make sure, and especially those who are here, I'm sure you receive an email for the podcast and the interview I will personally do to one of the one very exceptional trader, Anna Cooling. Uh, she's she's an expert when it comes to the volume trading. On uh, on Thursday at 4 p.m. Uh, GMT time, London time, we will have one hour uh, with her, and she will uh, go through her trading setup, how she starts her day, her day, what is she doing. Uh, how she trades. So I believe it's something nobody has to miss because this is going to happen one time only. Guys, please trust me. That's something. Uh, it's it's an opportunity. And I will send you here the link. I sent you the link. Please make sure you register yourself today and uh, make sure you have one hour on Thursday at 4 p.m. London time to come online, ask your questions. I'm going to have it all the time for you guys so you can type questions and you can ask Anna Kuli whatever you want, uh, how whatever you want to ask about trading, how she trades and all this stuff. It's something that 
admirals is uh, putting a lot of effort to uh, to deliver to you. So please make sure uh, you do that. You you give that opportunity to yourself. And I look forward to see you not only tomorrow on the live trading, but on Thursday at uh, 4 p.m. GMT time to learn from Anna Cooling here uh, awesome trading strategies and the way she sees the market. So again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning up. Uh, we should have a lovely day wherever you are. And I will look forward to see you tomorrow on the live trading. Thank you so much.